Sunday, June, I don't know, 5th, 6th, not quite sure, but I know it's Sunday. And today, today's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna try to get five or six hours in, um, cause it's so early, it's about noon, but I know I have some running around to do. I know I need to run over to the World Series in a little bit and see some people. I have some dinner plans. So we're gonna do our best to get a shortish, mediumish length session in and see what happens. Wish us luck. nine minutes at this table before I got dealt a playable hand. And that hand just happened to be the best hand in the business. Two black aces. The straddle is on, so essentially we are playing 5, 10, 20. Under the gun, I open a $50. Everyone folds except the straddler, which is kind of expected. We head to the flop, heads up. The flop, eight of clubs, jack of clubs, ten of diamonds isn't my favorite. At all. Highly coordinated, and if I'm being technical, I think the poker term for this type of board is icky. The straddler checks, and me getting three streets of value here will be hard. I check it back. The turn four of hearts is safe. The straddler now leads for $60, and I just call. The river four of clubs is even safer than the turn was. Now at least I'm ahead of a slow played flop two pair. The straddler continues with a bet of $130, and me, new to the table with no information on if this guy is a maniac or not, I take the passive route and find another call as opposed to raising. He tables queen of hearts, ten of spades, and we win our first pot. We win it like a wuss, but we win it. <laughs> few hands later, with the straddle still on, we find ourselves on the button with action folded to us. 9-7 of spades? Good enough. We open to $60 in the small blind calls. Small blind calls versus button opens are always interesting. I'm smelling a pocket pair. Heads up, we see a flop of jack of spades, seven of clubs, king of spades in the small blind checks. We flopped bottom pair and a flush draw and decide to just go for it. We load up $90 to get the battle started, but he folds before I complete my bet, which most likely means I was right. A pocket pair. first really sizable hand I got into happened during a period in which I wasn't recording, so I didn't get the beginning or middle of this hand, unfortunately. An early position player opens to $30, and I make it an even 100 with Ace of Hearts, King of Spades. He calls. We get to see another horrendous flop in Seven of Spades, Four of Clubs, Eight of Spades, and when he checks, I bet $130. He calls again. I get a little overexcited when the Ace of Diamond hits and vastly overplay my hand. I mean, vastly. He checks again. I bet $450 and he check raises me to $900. I should be super scared at this point, but here's where the vastly overplayed part comes in. I shove for $1,450 total. He doesn't like it but doesn't take too long before calling. When the river ace of spades hits, he lets out an audible groan. 
I expose my hand, and disgustingly, he fires his hand into the muck. He later told me that he had flopped top two pair. Um, oops. As I'm stacking my chips and trying really hard not to make eye contact with the guy I just sucked out on, I get a text that I was waiting for from my old buddy Jonathan Vibrations with his table location across the street at Paris as we had plans to meet up quickly at the WSOP. Not quite a hit and run, as I'm not leaving the game permanently, but it did feel kind of douchey to win a big pot via suck out and then take an insta break from the table. So I told you I had to do some running around, but at least we got in 30 minutes at the Bellagio. Um, before I decided to take a little break, I need to hoof it over to Bally's Paris and meet uh, Johnny Vibes for a quick second. Then we will hoof it back and resume um, the playing. In that 30 minutes that I did play though, I practically doubled up with Ace King I didn't get the beginning of that recorded, but I got the board. And um, what else happened? I want another pot or two. Game's good so far. Game's good. Look, I'm in line with the stars. I'm in sync with the earth. Ten toes deep, flower child from the turf. I never switch sides. Like, even when I die, I'm a ride for the squad. Let her ties in the hearse. I've been on the vibe kind of hard to describe. I'm in between I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle of the time of my life. I'm never so packed for the stack, never lied on the back. Got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen looking Tyson, do that ass survive, doing 80 to the house. Then I hit it to the sky, change haters on a tirade. Talking to the grip in the face, be still, let that hate stuff fade. We all want the same, we all want a meal in the safe. I want to live like I'm trying to be enlightened. Trail spill from my lips, feel big from the bit. Take a sip till I pass out. Try and get grip, but it don't make sense. Cause you can lose life on this fast route. Yeah. So, a quick breeze through uh, Bally's. Met up with my buddy Johnny Vibes. Picked up a hoodie. And now we are, uh, we're back to the Bellagio. Back to the fray. Making moves while I'm at. I'm still on the grind. Every time when I chat. I'm burning down sage. Keep the demons away. When I ready, give a piece of myself to the page. I don't do it for the praise, love. That's just how I'm made. Back into action we go, and this time I look down at Ace-9 offsuit on the button, and action hasn't been opened. I break the seal by making it $30, the small and big blinds come along, and we go to the flop three ways. Six of diamonds, queen of clubs, ace of diamonds. On a flop like this, there really is no reason to go large into two other people, so I just bet $40 when checked to. Both select the check call option, and everyone continues to the turn. The turn ace of hearts, as you can see, is really good for my hand. And when both blinds check again, the percentage of the pot I bet increases. I bet $130. This does get a quick call from the small blind, but the big blind has seen enough. He folds. We river gin when the nine of clubs falls and the small blind checks once more. With little reason to hold back here and long shot hopes that the small blind was pot controlling with a hand like ace 10, we drop $400 into the middle, but he folds before my chips even stop moving. Oh look, aces. Outside of the button 3-5 suited, these aces are the best hand possible. In early position, we open to $30. The low jack calls, followed by the cutoff calling. The button begins having larcenous thoughts. He puts in the three bet to $150 and action is now back on me. I have no calls here. An array should immediately shed both the low jack and cut off, so now my only concern is sizing. With the button having only $750 behind, we size down a tad with our raise and make it $450, hoping he just shoves. But if he calls, getting stacks in at this point shouldn't be too hard. However, we fail. He folds pretty quickly. Gold 
in my soul got the same on my neck. Six hundred. Six hundred. Officer, I know I shouldn't be flatting Jackson the small blind. I know that. But man, I just wanted to see the flop. I resigned as global ambassador for CoinFlex on June 28th once I got everything squared away on the legal front. Doug, nobody cares about your CoinFlex. Hey, old friend Johnny Vibes. You got busted for tournament mockups, didn't you? Hey, get your hands off me. I didn't mark up anything this year. I didn't even sell pieces. From the low jack, we make a pretty standard open here with king 10 of hearts and only the button calls. Out of position, we check the ace of hearts, five of hearts, three of spades flop as we would with a ton of hands, even ones that contain aces. The button decides to jump on our perceived weakness and chooses to bet about half pot. After a pause, we call with our nut flush draw. Seeing a non-paired heart on the turn would be pretty nice, but it's never that easy. Eight of clubs. Still with no reason to bet, we check again and begin mentally going through the options if the button continues his aggression. But he checks it back. The river four of diamonds is absolute garbage, meaning it's not a heart, it's not a king or a ten, and puts a one-liner to a straight out there. Garbage or not, we choose to get disrespectful here and lead for $70. I say disrespectful because in our position there aren't many hands with deuces in them that we would open, so we are repping incredibly thin. It's 6-7 suited, and not that much else. Essentially, we are trying to get him to fold a hand like 6-5 suited, or pocket 7s. If he stops and thinks about our bet, puts the puzzle together, we should probably get raised. But he doesn't. He just folds and we take down a pot that most likely doesn't belong to us. When you see us in this spot at the Bellagio, you can pretty much be guaranteed it is mid-session update time, and it is. Uh, despite the early running back and forth between the Bellagio and Paris, I finally settled in here at the Bellagio in a decent game, um, good conversation. One of the better players at the table luckily is on my right, so I don't have to deal with his shenanigans, and currently I'm probably up a little less than two grand. Somewhere between up 17 and up two grand. Um, haven't really gotten to any big spots. I made a big lay down with Jax when an OMC type limp shoved from early position. Um, I'm really racking my brain to try to come up with a tricky spot I have been in and I haven't been in any. Although I did not too long ago pull off a really bad bluff with King 10 of Hearts. Where I think I, where I think my sizing on the river was just way, way, way too small. But I got it through. 
and um, yeah. So the plan is to maybe put another three, maybe four hours into this game, see what happens, meet a friend for dinner, call it a night. That's your uh, mid-session update. Sometimes the really tricky part about making a vlog is trying to keep it interesting when the vast, vast majority of hands played during any given session are pretty formulaic. Standard, ordinary, not exciting. Take this hand for example. The under the gun player opens a standard amount and we choose to raise in the low jack with king queen offsuit. This isn't always a raise here, but I tend to take more aggressive actions when my high card, the king in this case, is a diamond. We make it $90 in the opener calls. On the flop of tennis spades, jack of diamonds, four clubs, we make a $70 continuation bet and the opener folds. Honestly, this is what 95% of played hands look like. There aren't really gigantic collisions all that often. Very rarely are there seven bet shoves with king high. In fact, it's quite boring. Two fifty. Sometimes, rarely, but sometimes, the five ten game at the Bellagio gets volatile. Here, the low jack limps, the high jack limps and I raised to $40 with king nine of diamonds from the cutoff. The button folds and the small blind decides to put in the six X raise to $250. Wait, what? If you think the hand ends there, you're wrong. The big blind cold calls the $250 and the original limping low jack, well, he now finds the call as well. What in the hell? Myself and the hijack, we've seen enough. Fold. The epilogue to this hand, the flop comes out 10 high, the small blind bets $200 in both the big blind and low jack fold. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. From the low jack, we open king queen offsuit to $30. Action folds around to the small blind and he finds the call. With action now in the big blind, he decides to put in a three bet, but not a real three bet, sort of like three bet junior. It's really small. He makes it $80. King Queen offsuit is a pretty easy fold had he put in a regular raise, but this teeny weeny itty bitty raise, we're going to peel. The small blind must feel the same, and he comes along. The spaded monotone flop of 874 most likely is good for no one. It's hard to flop a flush, and that board doesn't lend itself to a big blind three betting range, nor does it lend itself to my opening or three bet calling range. It's possible the small blind likes that flop more than everyone else, but he's out of position. This flop gets checked through. The turn brings the jack of clubs and the small blind checks again. The big blind has had enough of this checking and is done with keeping things small. He bets $200 into the $240 pot and we quickly fold. The small blind apparently is done with keeping things small as well and now check raise shoves all in for $650 or so. The big blind takes no time in releasing his hand.
remember a few minutes ago when I said a lot of the hands are pretty formulaic, standard, kind of ordinary? Do you remember that? I had king-queen, I think. Well, this hand, this one with ace-jack, same thing. Just the positions have changed a bit. Button opens, I three-bet, he calls. I guess it's slightly different because I flop a pair, but not really. I bet, he folds. How's that for excitement? I guess I could spruce it up a bit. Like a lion cornering a single hyena separated from the pack, we arrive. Here, our villain wagers $30. This should be a pretty wide range. A lot of garbage here. We aren't having that. We aren't having it. If he wants to mess with the bull, he's getting the horns. Three bed incoming, sucker. The button is now on his heels. He's reeling as he's thinking through his options. I see him blink three times. Three blinks. You know what that means. Weakness. I got him. The dealer says he calls, but I didn't see him call. I believe some chips fell off his stack due to his knees knocking together. No matter. You're in the ring now, fool. Tensions are high. The dealer knows what is at stake as he reveals the flop. Boom! Ace! That's what I'm talking about. The button gulps. He knows this will soon come to an end. Disrespectfully, I bet $50 into this ridiculously large pot, taunting him, daring him to do something. I'm itching for the fight, and he knows it beads of sweat form on his brow as I watch him like a hawk. Players from other tables are watching now. The room falls silent. The button peeks down at his cards one last time. But he knows what I already know. This battle is over. I guess that's a little better. It's about two hours or so after the mid-session update. I think it's about seven o'clock or so right now. Um, the game dynamic changed quite a bit over the last two hours. Table became very limp happy after a couple players left. Um, and tiredness just kind of hit me. I uh, had a long morning, ran back and forth to Paris, yada, yada, yada. And I know I still have some things to do at home and back here on the strip later tonight. So I just decided to wrap it up. In for 15, out for 35.58, if I remember correctly. <sighs> and now on to the next thing. Who knows if you guys will see the next thing, but if you don't, thanks for watching the vlog. If you like the vlog, like the vlog, and I will uh, catch you next time, which might be in a couple hours. Bye. And the plan today is to get down the Bellagio relatively early and create another vlog. This vlog. I got all the way down to the Bellagio and realized that I didn't have a dime on me. Not a penny, not a dollar, nothing. Right out the gate, gangbusters. 
the session started off fabulously. So if you guys wonder why Casey wasn't in more of the blog, it's because she decided she didn't want to be. She's shy. This is new shy. This is not true. This is new shy, Casey. This is not true. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Lying. Anyway, she'll be back. She'll be back for later on in the World Series, so I'm sure we'll see more of her. All right, we're going to try it again, Jamin. Uh, we've been having some difficulties here. My microphone's been cracking. This is the microphone I used to use like five years ago, so it's giving me issues. Hopefully, this time it works. All right, got an act. We gotta gotta do some acting here. Hey, get your hands off me! I didn't mark up anything this year. I didn't even sell pieces. I feel like that's good. One take. Yeah, one take. All right. Thanks, Jamin. Love you, bro. The game dynamic has changed. Probably didn't help that I lost like three hundred dollars. Okay, I told you I had to do some running around. Um, I practically doubled up with aces, uh, which I think you probably just, in that 30 minutes that I did play though, I practically doubled up with ace king, which I didn't record. Give me some change with some little yeah, guys. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you give me a change with my chips, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give you this when I see how you're playing that. With this, uh, this to the side. My game is good. Uh, good conversation. Good guys. Best. And that's about it. I'm really like racking my head. I'm really racking my. I'm really trying to like rack my brain to think of like tricky spots that I've been in. But I, although I did just pull off a really. Uh, kind of so with that we're gonna hang out here for a little bit get some fresh air we're gonna go back in there we're going to my face and then go eat some food all mornings are the same I don't want to play this game let me go back to sleep tell the alarm not to be just let me dream some more